Joycaster, which helps you take one stream and stream it to all the major streaming platforms that are out there. We've got Outhouse Games, which I just recently learned. Their name, Outhouse, is all about playing their games while sitting in the outhouse. I literally didn't know that. I don't know how I missed that. Um, who else did I forget over there? Flight Fishing. Flight Fishing just helps you uh, uh, find the cheapest deals uh, and send you right to your inbox. So anyways, just really kind of a cool thing. Again, these companies aren't starting, they're not, they don't have a napkin idea. Um, you know, that's for different stages. We take companies that have clearly got their business model identified and they can set out 30, 60, 90 day goals. Uh, and then we, we kind of come in and surround them with the resources they need to achieve those goals. Uh, and it all piles up to uh, Demo Day, which will be happening the first week of August, uh, where the community can come in uh, and see these, uh, our starters present on stage uh, both what uh, they've learned, what they've applied, and, and kind of where they're going with their company. So we're really excited. Uh, you know, guys like, what's cool about Demo Day is guys like Pete and others, you know, with Envelo and, and, and then with Rollins, uh, the community that actually backed Starter Studio with the Kickstarter campaign, uh, as well as uh, potential customers. It's all in the same room. It's really, really a cool thing. So uh, just know that that's coming up. In the meanwhile, we have Tuesdays and Thursdays, which is our brown bag lunches. That's what today is. It's highly about getting skills, right? Technical skills or things that you can apply directly into your business that day. And then Monday nights, we have Founders Talks. A really cool thing coming up next Monday is Sean with uh, Clean This World or Change This World? It's one of the two. Clean, clean this is world. it Clean This World? Really cool story. I met him at uh, Startup Weekend. He was one of the keynote judges, and, 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 and so. Uh, a very awesome story and uh, of, of kind of how he's mixing revenue and a nonprofit together. It's like pretty cool stuff. So that's Monday night. Uh, also Thursday we will have a brown bag lunch. We are keeping the speaker off the meetup right now um, because we're just kind of confirming the last second thing. But we're really excited. It's all about customer funnels and building that online funnel. So all that to say, that's what's going on. You can learn more at startstudio.com. Or all of our meetups are at meetup.com forward slash uh, starter dash studio. So that brings us to today. Oh, also, real quick, just to know, we don't shout them out enough. Our sponsors, uh, you can see them over there on the board. Uh, everything from uh, AADMG, AADMG, whatever it is, it's the uh, IP, intellectual property, legal, and all that counseling, to uh, Trinet uh, and to others. So it's pretty exciting to take a peek at that. Couldn't do it without there. All right, so for today, we've got Pete. Uh, Pete is an entrepreneur in residence over at Rollins College, uh, Crummer Graduate School of Business. Also serves as faculty advisor at Rollins uh, to the Entrepreneurial Scholar of Distinction Program, uh, mentoring teams of students as they find commercial applications and develop paths to market for technologies developed by NASA. So that's just kind of awesome. And then also, as you can see here, uh, he is a co-founder of Avella, Florida's newest business accelerator and seed capital fund. It's had uh, certainly a hand in Surf Studio uh, from the beginning, so just thank you for that. So Pete, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to talk to you today about sincere networking, both on the personal side and on the business side. So let me start with a very basic question. What is networking and why do you do it? Why do you need relationships? To bring in revenue. Oh, so, oh so it's a money making. No, time. it's an engaging. <laughs> oh, it's an engaging process. Because <laughs> uh, all things being equal, people buy from people that they know and trust. Okay. All things not being equal, people still buy from people they know and trust. All right. 
I would say when it comes to being successful in life, it all comes down to people yep. uh, connections. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Did everybody hear that? Yep. Life, not just business, but life is about other people. Your connections with people. Think about you just being completely isolated from everyone, everyone, not everything, but everyone you know in your life. What just happened to the quality of it? Now think about this. You have an idea for a business. Can you do everything you need to do when you're starting a business? Can you do half of what you need to do when you're starting a business? Can you do one one hundredth of the things you need to do when you're just starting your business? Maybe. Right? So the hundreds of things you need to do, do you think you could do it by yourself? Now granted, you had enough time, you probably could, right? You live to be 300, 400 years old, you could probably get to most of it. You'd be expert enough to be able to deal with most of it successfully. Do any of you have that kind of time? When you're an entrepreneur and in a startup phase, the two things that work against you are what? Time and money. Time and money. Oh, and I, comes to mind this old adage, time is money. Does that mean money is time? What does, buy you it'll buy, it could buy you some time though, right? You start up, it's like, wow, I just had another couple hundred grand to go hire a bunch of people to accelerate some things or go buy some equipment that would be, really be a benefit, it can buy you time. All right, so what is networking? I get the why, I get why you want to do it, but what is it? Do you physically have to be meeting some folks? Do you, can you do this stuff online? How does it happen? Building some relationships so you can get more relationship and uh, uh, share resources and talent. Okay, I like the shared resource and talent part of that. Excellent, yeah? Uh, I think it's just like finding a connection to anybody, really, somehow. What do you mean by a connection? On what level? Um, like if you, have, if you find something in common with them, like besides the business, and you're more memorable, so you're kind of networking with the person and marketing yourself at the same time. What makes the person memorable? Story. Their, their story, their back, or the, you know everything about their journey of where they've been, what they've done. So you start the conversation of engagement. Okay, good. If uh, I, I think you're truly interested in helping others to succeed, succeed to extent, the best way to, uh, or actually the quickest way to, to reach your dreams is to help someone else reach theirs. So if you're truly interested in helping others reach their dreams, you network uh, with anyone that is in three foot of you. It's called the three foot rule. You can do it at the gas station, at the grocery store. Just be curious and, and um, all that. And you can, and, and you can do that and, and develop viable contacts uh, for not only for you being able to help others, but then being able to help you as okay. well. So you give before you get. Exactly. You had your hand up? I was just gonna say experiences are, when you create an experience with someone, be it a very short 60 second, or it can be you know, something long term. And what is the number one experience that takes all of maybe a second or two? The number one experience? A smile. A smile. It does a lot for that kind of effort. Is networking discrete, which means it happens in intervals of time, or is it continuous, means, meaning it happens all the time? Happening accidentally all the time. Yeah, so when somebody says, hey, would you like to go to a networking event, I look at that as an oxymoron. Networking event, the event is discrete. It happens in a certain time frame, and that's that, and you're done, right? I get why those two words are paired, but networking is a continuous thing. Does it, who knows, does somebody in this room know every, everybody in this room? How many of you don't know anyone in this room? What is your name? I'm Drew. Welcome. Drew, welcome. Now you know Drew. Welcome. See, now you have a bunch of friends. That's great. And what I always like to do is, for any of you, obviously, and this is a shared experience kind of space. This is the kind of event, if you will, where you can share stories, there's probably a lot of common connection within this group. 
I have found over my years of being an entrepreneur here in Central Florida, which I'm happy to admit, kind of shocked that it's already been 20 years being an entrepreneur in Central Florida, and being a, the entrepreneur in residence in Rollins, that when you get groups of entrepreneurs together and you give them time and a space and good food, it's amazing what can happen. You would be amazed at the, the talent in this room, the skill set, the amount of experience, knowledge, and everything else. So get to know one another. Make it a point before you go to meet at least two or three other people. What do most people do networking for? What is the standard takeaway for networking is you do it as an entrepreneur? I think most folks, yeah. No, I'll say contact information. All right, so you're looking just to build a database of folks and so on. Why? What else? What else do you network? What, what's the purpose behind networking? To learn about the other person. To learn about the other person. It's sort of a lottery. I, um, every time that I that I need a person, I'm um, I'm hoping that I'm going to find a treasure. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Okay. I see. Okay. Maybe it's just information. Maybe you know you just want to find out some of their experiences or maybe something they've done and get more information from them, not necessarily making a connection or doing something down the road, but just using that information. Okay, good. I like learning and listening to their pain spots that make sense and want them to create. They want to sort of solve problems and then basically find solutions to help others. So when I find or listen to products like that, I love that because I feel like it's going out there and making Good. Yes? Can you repeat the question again? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, when you're out networking, what are you looking for? Ah, okay. Talk about shared experience, stories, all kinds of things that way. Yeah, um, ideas. Ideas, all right. How many, yes? I was just going to say opportunity. All right. How many of you would say capital? It wasn't that long ago where networking meant, oh, I'm out networking, meant we're out raising money. I'm glad that that's shifted quite a bit now. Have any of you networked for money yet? How do you raise capital when you're a startup? Or do you? I, I build a, a business plan and I suppose to, uh, to whoever can be interested I can fund my, my, my project or idea or, or interest. Oh, so where did you find somebody? Did you go to the bank? Did you talk to friends? Did uh, you go to I can go to the bank and present a, a business plan to them and I can apply for a loan. Uh, I have to keep in mind that I have to repay that loan. Yeah, it's a different kind of capital, right? A lot of times the initial seed funding seems to be through someone's network, and then it's at that point that the raising money happens, they kind of go on a road show type yeah. thing. Yeah. I did it all on, just on relationships of sales, word of mouth. I mean, service, sales, led to the capital, but I'm not going to, I will never do it the same way, but I believe sales has to be part of the process of capital. Yeah, it's, it's very true. I, I don't really agree with that. Let me put some pieces, or the links of the chain together for you. When you're out building your company, networking is important because as you get to know people with different skill sets and they resonate with what you're doing, they like the vision that you have, they may offer you some of their time. If they're really good and so on, you may have an opportunity for them to work with you directly and directly partner full time. Beyond that, as your company grows, chances are you'll need some capital. Guess what the first thing investors look for is in, in a company in a startup? Team. Yes. So what do investors invest in? People. And what's that mean, though? Relationships. Experience. Experience. Good. Relationships. Relationships. Because they say, okay, so you're asking me for a lot of money. I, the business part of it's great. Okay, I buy into that. I get your vision. You seem motivated to want to do that. But for me to part with the half a million of my hard-earned dollars, what am I looking for? The person running the company and the network of friends they have around them to help get something done. So the stronger the network, the more likely to the investment. And don't think investors aren't kind of looking into all those things. When I approached my first investor, the first thing he said is, could you give me the names and phone numbers of the people with whom you work? No. You made, what do you need that for? I just want to talk to him. <coughs> Fine. Here you go. 
So the first question the investor asked was, so tell me why this company matters. Why should I put any time or money into what you're doing? And thankfully, because of the network and the way we were working together and everything, things began to come together. So if you don't have a network and there's no message beyond just your own, funding becomes more difficult to find. Let's talk about your family and friends and why they're most likely to invest in you initially. Why are family and friends usually after your credit cards, <coughs> which is tough to do now anyway, or banks, which is nearly impossible to do? Why do family and friends invest in you? They, they know you. Better. They believe in you. So are they part of your network? Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. yeah, they're kind of the main nodes, right? Mm -hmm. So with family and friends, friends part in particular, Right? And with shared story, shared experience, everything that we've talked about today, those are the kinds of, when everybody becomes your friends, and they feel like you're a friend, which means you're giving at least as much as you're getting back out of the system, that's where really, really good things start to happen. My experience is uh, that whenever you, you invest in a friend, you lose a friend. What do you mean? Uh, I give him money, uh, he goes and tries to do something with his money, I think never. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, and you know, all the financial gurus uh, out there just, say he just keep running away from me. He, he doesn't want to pay. Yeah. Well, because you have a the typical master-slave relationship. You know how you protect the friendship. Ask, I don't ask him for, for my money back. Right? Does he know that? Sort of, but it's still he, he he doesn't want to pay. Me. Okay. Well, and it's tough. It's tough to take money from family and friends for exactly that reason. But it's the relationship that matters the most. That's why they're willing and maybe able to invest in you. No, what is your answer going to be to that? How would you protect that? Oh, uh, have a family or friend investing in you? Right up front, you are going to lose 100% of this money. Do you still want to give it to me? Mm -hmm. If it's not a gift, I don't want it. Exactly. If it has an interest rate, keep it. If you can't lose it, I can't take it. And with real brothers, they said, oh, good enough for me, I'll keep my money. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> One of them actually came back and said, all right, I have enough. I'll give you a few thousand dollars. But are you sure a small interest rate is? I said, no, nothing, nothing. You give it to me, you might as well. It's, you can set it on fire or give it to me. The result's going to be, end result will be the same. That's what I need to have, have you in your mind. As a matter of fact, I tell all my investors that. I have 55 investors in my company, Blue Orb. Um, 52 of them are right here in Central Florida. And the minute I sit down with them and I say, this is, this is the plan, this is what we're looking for, here's the team, this is the traction that we have, here's everything that we've built. I need, I'm looking for this amount of capital, debt or equity. I, the interest rate is 1% simple interest annually. So it's really kind of an interest-free kind of thing. And I am going to lose all of it. That's the mindset you need to have. And if they don't recoil, get up, leave, swear at me, spit on, spit on me, whatever, you know, we have the other conversation of this is a very risky business and you need to know that. I'll give you updates as I can and just know we're, we're on a tear. We've really got to move this. And when you level set expectations up front like that, it makes life a lot easier versus, oh, I'll pay you back in six months and then a year goes by and it's like, well, boy, my estimates were a little off. Um, you have all those kinds of issues to address. Is anybody familiar with Dale Carnegie's book? Okay, if you haven't read this book, you don't need the 1936 edition of it. There are 15 million plus copies of it available, so if you go to Amazon or your local bookstore or your library, I need to borrow one for a while. You even have oh, full courses on it. But this is the guy that started this. Now, what I think is kind of neat and exciting, I'm going to tie this back to the Lean Startup methodology an interview process that incorporates a lot of what Dale Carnegie taught. For those of you not familiar, here are some of the fundamentals. Speak ill of no man and speak all the good you know of, of everyone. This is how you build friendships. This is how you influence people. Uh, people react badly to criticism, and he says don't do it. Not behind doors, not behind their back, just don't do it. Foster them, you educate them, you don't criticize. Ever, ever do you criticize, especially behind people's backs. Say thank you. Or you could very easily add to that, say, I'm sorry, 
right, when things aren't going so well, it takes you a long way to diffusing some really bad situations. Express appreciation. You know what, when somebody is helping you with something, let them know that they're really, really appreciated. Very simple things. I know you're like, gee, this is kind of like the no-duh stuff, but you'd be amazed. Talk about what people want and help them get it and learn to listen. That goes back to what you said, sir. The whole, re really get to know people for who they are. Right, bring them into the fold. If there's any way that you can help them, do so. Ways to really connect with people, be happy. Uh, to see people smile, we talked a little bit about that, draw people out. So the minute you start to really get to know somebody and really get to know their story, where, where does that really begin to happen? How do you know you really connect with someone? When you're What's that? Well, it can happen that quickly, but I'm looking for a particular thing in somebody. Well, some people can say when they when they have a connection of, I guess, mutual uh, emotions together. Uh, it could be joy, or it could be something else. So yeah, I think it's definitely an emotional kind of. Um, generally, when they want, generally want to spend more time with you and to learn more about you. Yeah, when they drop their guard. Yeah. Right, that's what I look for. A genuine connection is when trying. When somebody's chatting and it's like, you know, you seem like a really nice guy. Yeah, and we do have that shared vision and you're not angling in on me. How many of us have been to a networking event where you're just bombarded with whatever local providers there? You know, I'm from Bright House. We have a deal for you. It's like, no, hang on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so dropping the guard, the emotional connection, right? Just that, that acceleration of that passion, that common thing that's shared. And that's what I mean by draw people out. Greet everyone you meet, show an interest in them, and a genuine interest, a sincere interest. Uh, remember, remember the things that are important to them. You'd be amazed at you know just knowing somebody's spouse's name or their pet's name and asking about how they're doing it really does make an impact. It makes a big, big difference. Encourage them to talk about themselves and their interests, and I do this on a continuous basis because I like to get to know people. You know, you always think, well. You know, what is, what is a life story really about? I will tell you, I've met some of the most, right here in Central Florida, some of the most amazing people in my life live right here. Just unbelievable stories about whatever they've been through, however they overcame it, especially because I do a lot of uh, work with children with special needs and disabilities and their families. Just unbelievable. Well, the doctor said my child with cerebral palsy wasn't gonna live beyond four months, four months old. Now that they're 18, you know, we're doing all these things, providing these kind of programs and everything else. And that between those four months and those 18 years, just the path and the story is just absolutely amazing. Remember people's names. That's the sweetest sound to them, by the way, somebody's <laughs> name. It's the sweetest thing they'll ever hear. Actively research uh, the other person's interests, either in person or online or whatever it may be. Those are always very strong connection points. Uh, and recognize them for their importance. And here's the, here are some other things just to kind of get people on board with contradictory thinking or people that just like to argue and so on. And this, the book goes into this in great depth. These are some of the high points. Don't argue with folks, just discuss it with them. Again, if you're looking for their point of view and they've got that barrier up, try to get the barrier down. Why do most people argue? feel they're not being heard, their guard is up, go ahead. They think they're right. Well, then they think they're right. And in their minds, it's maybe not, there's not an alternative I'm comfortable with, so I'm just gonna have to keep pushing on this front. You were gonna add to that? So I was just gonna say, um, when you're defensive, you know, you're kind of <coughs> rationally thinking all the time, you just kind of, whole point. Yeah, and remember, your position is the one you know best, so if you feel like you're being attacked, somebody's arguing with you, where is your defensive posture? What are you gonna be arguing? Obviously, the things you know, especially in the heat of the moment. Uh, give in, agree that the other person is right. Often, if they are or aren't, it, it doesn't really matter. Right? Just try to understand their point of view and really try to make the effort to do that. And don't ever tell a person they're wrong. That doesn't work so well with my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work so well with my students in an entrepreneurship class because. To be honest with you, what do I know? 
here's our business, our business model. Oh, you're wrong. Well, really? Let's, and I don't say that. It's like, well, let's, let's take a look at the data. Show me where this is going and how this all comes together. Right? You keep an open mind to all of that. Yes? Uh, I just wanted to make a comment about this slide. Um, I've had my business for a year now, and this is one of the first things I learned with working with my clients were those three points right there, and they have served me very, very well. So everybody keep in mind. <laughs> <laughs> now, you move up a few decades from 1936, I believe this book was written just a few years ago, Business Relationships That Last. Five steps. I'm not big on these five or eight to ten step kind of things, but this book really, I think, has done a, a pretty good job of encapsulating, you know, kind of the up to date how to uh, influence uh, friendships and relationships going forward. <coughs> well, it talks about three things your credibility, integrity, and authenticity. When those three things intersect, you have made a connection to someone. You have an ability to then begin to really start something very beneficial with that person you're building a relationship with. Think about this, if you have no integrity in a relationship, what happens to it? People don't trust you. There's no trust. What happens when there's no trust? There's no future, right? And there's no credibility. What happens if credibility drops out of this equation? It's, well, it's almost the same path. So these three things, you know, highly integrated, What's it mean to be authentic? Anybody, can anybody educate me on that? And digging deep down to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, mm -hmm. and you're speaking from the heart. So is this an external thing or an internal thing? Internal. Okay, are all these internal or external? Internal so this to is, external. So this is an internal process, all three of these. So if I'm authentic, what does that tell you about who I am? Trustworthy. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I don't sugarcoat anything. I try to be diplomatic in what I'm telling you, but I will be very upfront and honest with you. And, my thoughts on what you're doing. I don't tell you you're wrong or anything else. I try to guide you. Most of them that, that I know build very, very much their credibility, like they don't care about integrity and authenticity, they're very successful. They're lucky. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or they're selling something that is in such high demand that they can get away with that. Uh, Most of the time, without the three, it's tough. I'm Long term. What's that? I started saying most of the time. Oh, most of them, okay. They, they build credibility, but they don't have integrity, or they don't have, even though they disguise it so well, but it's very, very hard to, to perceive that. Yeah, well, if it's a one-time sale, you can kind of get away with that, can't you? If it's a multiple sale, good luck. And those relationships over time falter. Uh, you already said what I said. In the long term, it's not possible. Okay. So how do you build these three things? If these three things are really that important, how do you build them? How do you build integrity, authenticity, and credibility? You live in. Yeah, but give me some examples. <coughs> how, how do you become credible in anything that you're doing? Don't, don't or incredible? Mm -hmm. What? Don't lie. Yeah, be honest, okay. I know when I look back at everything I did, I always built my business based on service first, sales second. It was never about the money. And I informed them and educated them along the way. And it became a part of word of mouth and referrals. And yeah. other people wanted to know, like, and trust me too. And it just builds from there. Yeah. Um, don't make statements or take actions that you can't back up and carry out. And as Dale Carnegie says, right, the way you talk about somebody behind their back is exactly the way I'm talking about you behind your back, right? Your credibility takes a massive hit. How many of you know people that, you know, as they gossip, it's like you don't, you don't understand, you're basically destroying all three of these things. And unfortunately, you know, as a culture, it seems like those are the things that we like, we focus on, we thrive on and stuff. But no, the credibility part, the authenticity part, how do you become authentic? We'll talk about this in a second, but how do you know who you are? Do, how many of you know who you are in this room? How did you How did you come to know who you are in this room? <laughs> Self-analyzing, learning from my mistakes. Um, yeah, but did somebody help you learn from those mistakes or were they just self-evident? 
both. Some were learning from someone else or you know pointing out something, and others were just me recognizing that 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 didn't work, and I would need to try another way. Okay, so try that again. Has anybody? Yeah. Authenticity. My, I try to build that that deliverance whatever I offer from or uh, trying to to base my conclusions and share my conclusions based on facts, not on opinion. And if it is an opinion, then I probably it is. Well, then you're very clear on that, right? You're not throwing, you're not putting that on anyone else. So. That way, I, I have found a, a few years ago, very recently, that somebody is asking me something and I'm telling them uh, what it is. And they say, really? And they immediately go to the phone and look in the video from, from Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fact, fact checking. It was really fun. They, yeah. you know, they, they, they could do that. Yeah, my students do that to me all the time, too. It's like, uh, you throw up a stat on the, whatever you're saying, and it's like, hold on, just Dr. Pete, give us one second. <laughs> no, Orlando is no longer the number one world destination. It's now Paris, France, or whatever it is, or New York, right? So they're always fact checking against, against things. So you're right, you gotta be really careful about what you're saying. Credibility to me comes from, and Greg, you're a very good example of this. You know, for people that are reaching out to help a lot of other people in credible ways, right? Like we're putting a program together to help other entrepreneurs. Well, what's in it for you? helping other entrepreneurs. Well, what's in it for anybody? Well, if entrepreneurs do well here, continue to do well here, raise money here, hire people here, isn't that good for all of us? Sell other companies for big bucks, take some of that money, invest it into the other companies, because obviously there's a pattern, there's something that can be followed there, some wisdom at least. Those were, that's where the big things really come together. So content, your opinion does matter to a lot of people that I've out there. It doesn't need to resonate with everyone. But for the people that it does resonate with, you build yourself a tribe. For those of you that are not familiar with Seth, Seth Godin, the internet marketer, read his stuff. Amazing guy on you know, building a tribe and getting your voice heard among the people that would most likely listen. Okay. So credibility, integrity, and authenticity between you and your client, they have their goals, passions, and struggles. Right? This is a constant loop. Again, Always look at networking as a dynamic process, not as a static process. Look at it as a continuous and not discrete. So it happens everywhere, all the time. <clears throat> I was talking to a gentleman uh, just this morning, in fact, and he was just a side story. It was before a meeting started. He said, you know, I'm really struggling finding a manufacturing partner. You know, we're developing this device, and I'm cold calling people, and I just, I have no idea who I'm looking for, what I'm looking for, what a proper quote is, and so on. And I said, you know what? I've been through what you've been through. Let me send you a couple names. Let's see if it works. If these don't, it'll get us on a, at least a, a, a lot closer than, than maybe otherwise. So just with those little conversations, right, you can really begin to help people through this entire process, right? As an entrepreneur, and this is what I really love about Central Florida Entrepreneurs, it's a great group of individuals. If you're not afraid to ask, they are not afraid to help. Or even not even a direct ask. If somebody, if you overhear somebody saying something and you know how to help them, it's a great community for that help to happen. All right, so the book goes on, and this is kind of the ladder that they have. So what, from an acquaintance, you establish common ground. We've already talked about that. Display integrity and trust, right? If this is a major issue. Hey, my friend just was diagnosed with something terrible, needs some medical help. You can tell he's just in a state of not knowing what to do. Hey, I'll tell you what, just let me make a couple calls. I, I know what state you're in. Um, how can I help? And I have some ideas. Do you mind if I make a couple of phone calls and see if we can figure some of this stuff out? All right, so that's integrity and trust. Purposeful use of time, right? You definitely want to make sure that when you're developing a relationship with someone, you're not wasting their time. Right? Get, to, get to the point, depending on what their personality is like, you, you know how to gauge it. Get to the point. Purposeful use to me is really sitting down. What was the issue that we were discussing? Let's define that. What, what did we brainstorm? Give me a quick recap on where this was going. Okay, 
So what happened, what transpired since then, and what are some of the potential solutions? To divvy up some tasks potentially and keep moving on. That's a purposeful use of time. Offer authentic help. You know, how many of you work with people that have offered lip service before? Oh, I think I can help, let me do some things and so on. I've done this, that's all in the kind of black. I'm guilty of it too. I think I can help, oh, that got too heavy of a lift, I didn't have time or whatever, right? But I'm working on, you know, the authentic help, you know, prop, deliver on what you're promising and make sure you see it through. And then as a respective advisor, this is kind of the, the top of this ladder where people will come to you and say, look, I know you, you don't have an agenda. You're not angling in on me. You don't charge a few hundred bucks an hour for your time and all this stuff. But I have a quick question that I think you have the knowledge to solve. Again, because you're authentic, because you have the credibility, because you have all these things and relationships built, people will start to come to you. Right? So that's kind of the, the pinnacle of this. And on both sides, you have the art, and the soft skills part of it. And then, of course, your knowledge and wisdom and, and skill set on the other side. Uh, if, you're, if I were to summarize this whole thing, right? We mentioned it, I don't know how many different ways and different times already this afternoon. But when you're of service to others, good things really begin to happen. Call it karma, I don't care what you want to call it, but it's just something that works extraordinarily well. When you're in a position to help someone, it's, it's a profound blessing. And if you decide that's something that you can do and will do, it really comes back. I can't tell you how many times, tenfold, hundredfold. Yeah. I think I've had a negative experience about that. Uh, it's not influenced in my life, but let me share it with you. Sure. Sometimes the uh, being of service or trying to help other people, a picture you as arrogant or patronizing. Arrogant patronizing. Arrogant and Yeah. <coughs> and you'll take some lumps from time to time. People will take advantage of that. Well, if you're going to be of service to me, I'll take full advantage of that, right? But they are the takers, they are the givers, and, 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 by, and, and by and large, I think the balance, at least in my experience, has always been the folks that respect you and your time and everything are very much outweigh the folks that are just to kind of grab everything, and you, and you know who they are fairly early on, thankfully, or at least you do over time. All right, let me talk a little bit about StrengthsFinder too. Let's go like internal. How many of you know what your strengths are? Let me ask you, have you taken the Strength Finder? I have. All right. I don't remember which one they told me. <laughs> so, so well, what are some of your general strengths? Yeah, outside uh, of this. A lot of organization, uh, a lot of, uh, so organization, there is e I'm kind of easy to talk to, easy to have conversations, um, good to follow through, kind of, uh, will get things done, take them all the way. Okay, good, good. Anybody else familiar with the strength finder too? Your results, do you remember? Yeah, I had to pull them up. Uh, achiever, learner, input, intellectual, future. All right, let's talk about some of these. So, so this is a 34 theme kind of test that you can take. So strength finder 2.0 is a book and a website. You buy the book, they'll give you your top five themes. You pay a few hundred more dollars, they'll give you uh, much more robust questionnaire to give you the definition of your 34 themes and how you kind of measure against each one. Here are the top 10. I'm not going to read all these to you. I'll send you the deck. Yep. We can, I can put that one. So th these are top 10, and they, I just took them in alphabetical order. So it'll say, okay, so if you come up to be an achiever, uh, that means people strong in, achiever, in the achiever theme have a great deal of stamina and work hard. They take great satisfaction from being busy and productive. How many of you are that? That's a pretty typical entrepreneur kind of theme. And now, you might be saying, yeah, Pete, wait a minute. You know, all of these, it's like reading like the horoscope. Oh, that definitely applied to me. I'm not even under that a category. Um, activator, people strong in activator theme can make things happen by turning thoughts into action. They are often impatient. How many of, of you does that describe? <laughs> I'm like, okay, get to the next one, get to the next one. Um, <laughs> Command people strong in command have theme have presence, right? Uh, they can take control of the situ situation and make decisions. How many of you kind of represent that theme? I right, kind of walk into a room and it's like, oh, Greg is here. Everybody just kind of hushes uh, and says, oh, what, Greg, here's the situation. What, what's your call here? Right? 
and you're not afraid to do that. People know that about you, and that's a very common, actually it's not fairly common uh, among entrepreneurs, but certainly versus most other uh, disciplines it is. Let me share with you mine. So we've already talked about achiever learner. People strong in the learning stream have a great desire to learn and want to continuously improve. In particular, uh, the process of learning rather than the outcome excites them. Guess why I like to teach? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that's rocket science at its best. Believe people in strong in their belief theme have a certain core values and are unchanging. How do those value emergence is defined a defined purpose for their life? Did I ever show you my business plan? I brought it with me. Because this belief one is I've reduced it down to no passes around so you can see it. <laughs> This is Amy. She has cerebral palsy and uh, vision acuity issues. I don't know Amy. I've never met her, but she is a product. She is a user of Aurora Touch, and I am in touch with her physical therapist well, once a quarter now, but certainly much more frequently. This is my entire business vision. So what do we do? We help people like Amy with the use of assistive technology. That keyboard that she's using is our Orbit Touch keyless keyboard. So that's my belief theme. Strategic, people strong in the strategic theme create alternative ways to proceed. How many of you are like that? How many of you have pivoted your business at least once? <laughs> You'll fit out of that one. Futuristic, people strong in futuristic theme are inspired by the future and what could be. They inspire, they inspire others with visions of the future. Now, the second reason why I like to teach, right? So very, very strong themes, and I thought, yeah, those are pretty accurate for, for what I am. And I do, you know what, that whole achiever thing, I have a great deal of stamina and work hard because I love what I do. I mean, how hard is that, right? And they also applied this just recently. They took the Strength Finder 2.0 stuff and put it together for a leadership uh, type opportunity. I won't go through all of these, but basically what they did is they took the 34 themes and grouped them according to relationship building, influencing, executing, and strategic thinking for your team. So take all the 34 themes. If you know what your strengths are and the strengths of your team or the themes of the rest of your team, you can actually go through an exercise like this to find out exactly who on your team has certain qualities and, and things that um, they're, they're best in. Does anybody recognize this guy? <coughs> Steve Blank. Uh, what did he, well, tell me about him. He's part of Lean Startup. Yeah, he's the guy behind this Lean Startup stuff. What is the Lean Startup? Proving that the product is based on for the customers. It's like getting them more out of the creation mode into the street of yeah. reminding them. Yeah, but what you said is exactly right. Hypothesis driven entrepreneurship. <laughs> what does that mean? I have to know there's a market. I have no right to write a business plan until I know I have a business model. Any chance that you can go back to the previous? <coughs> Very well. So what is hypothesis-driven entrepreneurship? I have an idea. I want to know if anybody in the world cares about it. So what do I do? I'll talk to a few people about it. If there seems to be some traction and so on and so forth, are they being genuine? Are they being authentic? Don't ask your family and friends if you think they think of your idea. It doesn't count. Because they're going to go one of two ways. If it's an older brother, it's always going to be negative. Or maybe an older sister, too, I'm not quite sure. And if it's a parent, they're going to be maybe supportive, maybe not. And if they're friends, you're either going to get one extreme or the other as well. Right? So you've got to learn to get out there, build relationships with people, network in a very different way to really understand if your idea has legs in the marketplace for you to continue. Don't go raise a million bucks of capital, build a product that nobody wants or needs. It's gut-wrenching. I've been there, I've done it. <clears throat> Thankfully, the product pivoted and is doing okay. But, oh, talk about a lot of sleepless nights. I had just done the lean entrepreneurship, or the lean startup methodology. I would have known about it 10 years ago. It would have saved me a lot of sleepless nights. So here's the customer interview. This is what the book espouses for doing a customer interview, to understand if your methodology, your service, your product has legs. Work through their schedule, and right, that's a good thing. Get psyched to hear things you don't want to hear. 
Disarm politeness training, what does that mean? I just want the facts. I really want to know what you think about this. Don't be polite. I can take it. I'm an adult. Yes, it's, it's my invention or my thought or whatever. Right? I do have an ownership in it, but don't worry about that. Tell me what you honestly think. Start with behavior, not feedback. Ask open-ended questions. Listen, don't talk. Encourage, but don't influence. You're wrong. Is a total statement against what this is saying. Follow your nose and drill down. Prepare it back to confirm. Thank them. We talked about thanking. Ask for introductions. Write up your notes as quickly as possible. So when you take a look at what Dale Carnegie kind of put together in 1936, the overlap with this is almost 80%. Because when, when we're talking about sincere networking, we're talking about it at every single level. Right? Getting to know people, getting to know people that would want your product. By the way, when you have a big enough network, it's really easy to test your ideas and services and stuff because you know exactly who you talk to and exactly for what reason. Because you know their story, you know if they're authentic, you know if they're credible, you know all of these different things about them. It makes life, it makes everything move faster. After you go through that, is it inappropriate, if, if you see good alignment, is it inappropriate to ask for an endorsement? When the relationship is built strongly enough, you should ask for the endorsement. If there, as a matter of fact, it will probably come naturally from them. Like with the Orbitouch, you know, hey, how's the product? Oh, it's working great. Do you mind if I tell somebody else about it? No, of course not. We'll do it through our website. Tell you what, you, you write it and I'll post it. That's the best thing that can happen. That level of relationship is exactly what you're looking for. The weird thing is people get into this really well, they start really well, but then they get defensive somewhere in there. Oh, but here's what we're doing to correct that problem. And, and they don't let the other person talk. And